Welcome everyone to a video that explains you how you can set up Unity and how we are going to build a custom RPG game or should I say your first RPG game. So uh, if you are a total beginner, this is Unity Hub. I am using the version 2.4.3 and to get this, just head on over to Google, type in Unity, download and then you can download Unity. So just download this Unity Hub, it's right here, I already downloaded it, and uh, this is what you're gonna end up with. Of course, not with these projects, so uh, you're not gonna have a Unity version yet, so go ahead over to Installs, and click on Add a New Version. So uh, I highly advise to use this LTS, which means Long Term Support, as it says up in here, and it basically means that it is not going to crash on you. So just download one of those and don't worry about anything else because later on you can go and you can add modules. So these are the modules. What you can do with those is build for iOS, for TVs and what have you. Anyway, so after you do that, go on projects and here is your projects. So to add a new project, you can just click on new or if you have multiple versions, you can click this down arrow and this is going to show you the versions. So this is the long term support one. So we're going to click that and we are going to name our project. I don't know, like my first RPG game. So if you're using the version of Unity 2020.3.0, you're going to have these templates. So uh, what these do is basically give you a head start on how you can do everything. But we're not going to use those because we want to do everything in our own. And we are going to optimize it as we go. So uh, one thing I highly advise on using is the Universal Render Pipeline. Since it kind of works in both worlds with high definition and without any render pipeline. So click on that and simply hit create. All right, so after having waited a couple of minutes, here is our project. We're simply going to skip the new version for now. And uh, this is our scene. A very quick introduction, although I shouldn't do a introduction because we are going to learn everything along the way. Before we do anything, we are going to see that this global illumination is clogging up our computer and about 90% of people hate this global illumination so we are going to stop it so head on over to window rendering lightning here is our lightning and all we want to do is uncheck baked global illumination after we do that we want to uncheck auto generate so after we do that we simply hit generate and this is going to be done in just a moment Okay, so now we can look around our scene without having interruptions. So what we have in here is obviously our scene. So um, don't get confused with scene and game. This is what the user is going to see when you launch the game. So this is your game panel and this is your scene panel. The scene panel has all these buttons, which we are going to check out along the way in this course. And into the right, we have our inspector. So for now, it is showing absolutely nothing. But if we click on over to one object, we are going to see that it is going to show us the properties of that object. So what we have in here is only a transform. So any game object that you're going to have in the scene will have a transform. So what a transform is, is basically the position in the world. So as we can see, if we move this, we're going to see that the X position is moving as well. Next thing that this can have is any kind of component, as we can see in here. So we can just add any component we want. And this is going to show us the component list. So we can add all these components. We're going to also check out that in the future of this course. Next thing that we have is this hierarchy. So uh, what this is displaying is every single object that is in the scene. As we can see in here, it is called sample scene. So uh, don't get confused with sample scene. 
it is simply a name and if we go into our assets head on over to scene we are going to see that we have that very same scene as we can see in here so what we can do is create a brand new scene call it beautiful scene and if we open that up we are going to see up here a beautiful scene beautiful scene for now has a directional light and it has a main camera if we take away the main camera which we can do with this check marker in here this is not going to render anything anyway we are going to check out that as well and down here we have our project and our console this is going to show up our errors this is going to show up our suggestions and it is also going to show us our debugs we are also going to see all of those in the future episodes next thing that we have is this project so this is all the assets you are going to have while building your game so as a first tutorial we are going to do a very very simple controller for a player so to do that first we are going to need a platform that our player can walk or stand so we are going to create a 3d object plane and here is our plane the plane for now has no material this is the default material so uh, we're obviously not going to leave it as default because that is going to give us some problems in the future we are going to create a brand new material now materials are very very easy to work in unity all you're going to do is hit create by the way you can right click anywhere into the project asset hit create and then here we have all these options we are going to check out material here is our material and we are going to name it ground we're going to drop this material into the ground and now as we can see it changed appearance so for now we are going to do something like i don't know this one we're not going to make it reflective or actually we can do reflection as well and for now we are going to leave it like this now if you plan to use unity for a long time you are going to come across this transform very very often now when making a brand new game object like a cube for example this is going to appear in the middle of the scene so if we move all the way over to here we create a new game object it is going to create it in this center of this scene now the problem with that is that it creates it in this position so we don't want that we don't want our sphere just hanging around somewhere in the in the world we want it to be at the position zero so uh, always remember to reposition your objects so uh, to do that is there is a very very handy trick you can click these three dots in here and you can hit reset now we have our plane sitting at zero position in the world to focus into that plane all you can do is highlight the game object and hit f now we are focused into that plane very cool very nice now the components of the plane are very very straightforward so we have a mesh render you can take that and we have a see-through map and i think that is quite self-explanatory something else that this uh, game object has is this collider so what this is going to allow us to do is to collide with other game objects so we can do a very very quick test we can have our game sitting up here and we are going to make a very very simple sphere right here the sphere is not set to zero so we're going to set to zero and then we are going to drag it up here now you might think that if we hit play this sphere should fall to the ground and roll away so uh let's do that let's see what happens if we hit play wait a couple of seconds and the game is now playing we are going to see that nothing is happening now the reason for that is because this troop or game object has no physics to add physics there is a very handy component called rigid body we have a rigid body 2d and a rigid body so we're going to click rigid body and now this has physics so straight away we can just hit play and now this will fall to the ground as we can see in here 
Now because it is centered and it is in position 0, it is not going to roll away. Okay, now if we tilt this plane just a little bit, by the way you can hold control and snap rotations. If we tilt it just a little bit and we hit play, we are going to see that the ball will roll and eventually fall into the void. Okay, that is very cool so far. Okay, so now we have a simple plane and we want to add a game object and then we want to control game object with our keyboard. To do that, we are going to create a new game object that we want to control. So we have all of these options in here and we're going to do a very simple sphere game object. So we're going to always remember to reset the position. We're going to lift it up just a little bit so it's above the ground. We're going to give a rigid body and now we are ready to possess this game object. To do that, we are going to need to script it. So what a script is, is basically the logic that you give this game object to do stuff that you want to do. And to do that, we are going to need a script. So if you have this exact same version and you've chosen universal render pipelines, we are going to already see a script in here. The script that we already have is called simple camera controller. And we can see a very short description of it in our inspector. What we're going to do is obviously create a new C sharp script. So there's two ways of doing that. We can go into our assets, create, create new C sharp script, or we can do it directly in here and tell it to create a new script. We want to call the script controller. So type in controller and select new script. Now this will create a new script and automatically attach that script into that game object. Okay, so now we have a controller script that is a part of this game object. Here is our script. We're going to drag that script and drop it into the scripts so we are nice and organized. And you might have guessed it, we are going to populate the script. After opening your script, this is what it should look like. So a brief introduction into programming, if you're not already familiar with it, is we have these imports in here or the C sharp likes to call them using. We have our name, we have the behavior, we can delete this behavior and now this cannot be a part of any game object. As we can see the Unity engine just got de-highlighted and we have our start and update. So these are self-explanatory and we can read it in here. It shows exactly what it does. So I'm going to increase the font just a little bit so you can see better. and in the start method what we want to do even before the start method we want to declare some variables and there is a couple of ways of declaring variables so we can do public we can do protected and we can do private if you're working alone you are always going to use public and you can just not use it at all so you can just declare a integer value you can call it vertical and you can give zero so now we have a variable that is declared as a global variable. Now a global variable is a variable that can be used in any of these methods. For now we are going to tell it to be public. So now we have a public integer vertical. Okay let's delete the integer and let's declare some new variables. So we're going to declare a float variable and we are going to name it forward. And you might have guessed it this is going to handle forward movement we're going to declare another variable and we're going to call it right. These are the two variables that we are going to use to control our game object. For now, we are going to use nothing in the start method and we are only going to update. Just to keep things a little bit more organized, I'm going to delete those and now we are going to work in the update. So what do we want to do with the forward and the right? So obviously we want these to be equal to the presses that we give the keyboard. So you can just say forward is equal to input dot get axis and into the brackets we can just say a axis name and the axis name is vertical and we can just do that and now this will be equal to the forward movement. But 
we are going to stay even more organized and we are going to create another function. So in here we are going to say void movement. We're going to take no parameters in here and we are only going to update these two variables. So we are going to say forward is equal to input dot get axis vertical. And we are going to do almost the same thing for the right. We are going to say right is equal to input dot get axis horizontal. Okay, so in order for this function to be actually called, we are going to have to use it into the update. So just say movement. And now we are calling this function into the update. So hit save and head on over back to Unity. And now if we highlight our character, we should see two new slots in here. So if we hit play and if we click our game tab, we should see our forward and our right movement actually showing input. So I'm obviously just pressing the forward and sideways keys into my keyboard and these are changing. Now that is good. Now let's translate these movements into actual in-game movements. And to do that is quite straightforward. So to actually move a game object, there is like a hundred ways of doing it. The way I'm going to tell you is this one. So you can just say game object, and this is referring to the game object that is attached to this script. So game object dot transform dot position. This is quite self-explanatory, the position of this game object. And we want that position to change depending on this movement in here. So if we head on over back to scene, we are going to see these axes. So this is a y axis and we don't want our player to move in the y axis. So we want to tell it to move this way and this way. So we're going to say new vector 3. Now this takes in three parameters and we can just leave them as zero. But we don't obviously want to do that. So as a first parameter, we want to simply give it right. And for the last parameter, we want to give it forward. Now, if we hit save and we go back to Unity, we should see our player moving into both axes. And that is almost what we want. So uh, we can just go ahead and keep on working on this and make it quite perfect, but we are going to leave that for a future video. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you learned something from it. And uh, we'll see you in the next videos.